finally made it to Romania. It took about five hours. Uh, the uh, border was very simple to pass through because uh, it's a, one European country to the other. In fact, because we don't have European passports, they had us pull over to the side for a few minutes and then we were on our way. Uh, we are now here in Bucharest and I will see you in the next location. Upon our arrival in Romania, we checked into the hotel that is run by the monastery of Radu Voga. There we met with our good friend Eliza. But before going and venerating in the monastery, we stopped in a small store where we bought some Cypriot cheese called Halloumi. Once we heard they had it, we, being Cypriots, could not resist buying it. The monastery of Radu Voda was founded in the 16th century by Alexandru II Mircea, who was prince of Wallachia. Today, located in the heart of Bucharest, it is a very active monastery that hosts public liturgies and services daily. In the main church, we found the people venerating the relics of Saint Ephrem of Neamacri and of Saint Nectarius of Egina, the wonder worker. Across the street from the monastery sits a small chapel, which according to tradition is the first church in Bucharest. Legend has it that a shepherd named Bukur built it, and that's where the city of Bucharest receives its name. All the icons are, um, are have more than 200 years, mm -hmm. are more than 200 years old. Yeah. And they have been renovated and kind of maintained. The Iconostasium is from like, the mm -hmm. 1659. Yeah, it's the Visericus of Orthodox Monument, it's historic. It's an Orthodox uh, church, of course, and the historical monument. Then we stopped for an early dinner before heading to the Patriarchate of the Romanian Orthodox Church. The Romanian Orthodox Church is a relatively new one. Up until 1865, this land was under the jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople. Ecumenical Patriarch Joachim IV granted recognition to the Autocephalous Metropolis of Romania in 1885 which was raised to the rank of Patriarchate 
in 1925. It should also be noted that the patron saint of the Romanian Church is the Apostle Andrew, the first called. At the end of our first day in Bucharest, we took a drive around the city, and among other things, we passed by the massive cathedral called People's Salvation Cathedral. We couldn't visit because it is under construction and won't be open to the public until 2024. The next day, our friend Elisa brought us to her parents' home to eat breakfast. Yeah. So that they won't stick. We ate a traditional Romanian breakfast, plus the halloumi, which was delicious. This monastery was built between 1713 and 1715 by Saint Antim the Iberian, who was the Metropolitan Bishop of Wallachia in those days. During the communist rule of Nicolae Ceausescu, the government wanted to demolish the church, but a project organized by engineer Evgeniu Iordacescu saved the church by moving it to another location. After venerating in the church, we met with a monk who gave us a guided tour of the monastery's museum. Here there are books printed by Saint Antimos. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a great typograph here in Valachia. There are books printed in the Greek, in the Romanian, in Slavonic, in Arabic, and in Georgian also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, books of uh, services of the church, historical books. Apologetical books, yeah, um, and uh, a lot of these books that uh, were sent free in in Greece, in Syria, in all the Orthodox area uh, occupied by the Ottomans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, this, these books helped a lot uh, Orthodox to to keep the, their faith. Christian, yeah, Christian. Saint Antim was a native of the kingdom of Kartli, or modern-day Georgia, and was born in 1650. He was taken as a slave by the Ottomans and was relocated to Constantinople. He was freed from slavery by the Ecumenical Patriarchate and moved to Wallachia in 1689. In 1708, he would become the Metropolitan of Wallachia, or modern-day Romania. The Ottomans would later assassinate him. On his way into exile, after departing from the monastery of Saint Antim, 
we made it to the small chapel near the Cathedral of the People's Salvation. We were greatly moved by the people's reaction to Father Panayoti's priesthood. Romanians are truly a devout people with great humility. The surname of the man with the disability was Panaitescu, which translates to of Panayoti. This means that someone in his family had Panayoti as their first name. Moved by this, he gave Father Panayoti a big hug. The final place we would visit in Romania was the monastery of Cernica. Cernica is about an hour outside of Bucharest. This monastery was built in 1608 during the reign of Radu Sherban and was founded by the great lord Mihai Vitazul. This church is dedicated to St. George and was built by the hierarch St. Kalini, whose relics can be found here. And finally, we came to the cemetery of the monastery. Here is buried the famous theologian Father Dumitru Staniloai. Father Dumitru was persecuted and imprisoned during communism in Romania. The Romanian Orthodox Church is actually preparing to canonize him among other influential holy men and theologians. The next day, as we were leaving for Serbia, we caught just a few minutes of the Divine Liturgy for the Transfiguration of the Savior at the Monastery of Radu Voda. We 
We hope you enjoyed this special episode of Neither Here Nor in Jerusalem. And we also hope that you will visit Romania and its many holy places one day in the future. Next, we will be exploring the region of Kosovo and Metohia in Serbia. See you all there. In the